Hi YouTube, welcome back to the Nordic Watch channel. I'm Anders from Finland and today a review of the Seiko Mini Turtle. That is the reference SRPC35 or 37, depending on if you get it on a bracelet or on a silicone strap. So this one came on a silicone strap, so it's the SRPC37. And uh, I'm gonna keep it on a Miltat bracelet today. I don't have the bracelet that comes with the mini turtle but I just want to keep it on a bracelet for the review to give you an idea of what this watch looks like and wears like on a bracelet. Later on in this video I'll be making some comparisons between this and the SKX009 so stay tuned for that and I will also go. I'll also put this uh, silicone strap on this watch to give you my opinions on the strap. If you're looking for strap inspiration for this watch, stay tuned to the end of the video or skip to the end of the video to see how this thing looks on a variety of straps. I'm gonna try and do this in my review videos from now on because I think it's a pretty nice information to have when you're getting a watch or getting a strap to see how that combination looks beforehand. Okay, let's jump into it. So packaging in 10 seconds. Basic Seiko box, take off the lid, other box inside, your basic manual and guarantee card, and the inner box with this black suede-like material, Seiko branding inside, and that's it. Now the watch. So the Seiko Mini Turtle, this is an excellent watch to get if you have a slimmer wrist like I do. This thing wears pretty much like the SKX and I say, I'd say this wears even smaller. I think Seiko released this model in 2017 and it's been uh, pretty popular amongst people with slimmer wrists and I think it should be even more popular. But maybe one thing that's a problem there is the price point because this thing is a little bit more expensive at least if you buy it from a store directly. I bought mine second hand as usual, so I got a great deal for this watch. With the Miltat bracelet, I think I paid around 250 euros. So if you have the possibility, try to get a bargain. But I think if you buy this thing new, it will set you back uh, maybe 350, 400, 450. So dimensions of the watch. It's got a diameter of 42.3 millimeters and it's 13 millimeters thick. It's got a lug width of 20 mils and it's only got a 43 millimeter lug to lug. So this distance here. So 43 millimeters lug to lug, that's really compact. And I think that's what make, makes this thing wear really nicely. Now I don't have the original bracelet and this one does not fit exactly like the original one because uh, this has protruding middle links so this will actually sit a bit more archly than the original bracelet because that original bracelet has uh, links that fall directly down from the lugs. So dimensions out of the way, let's take a closer look at the case. It's a cushion case, much like on the Seiko Turtle. So it does look a little bit different than your, let's say Seiko SKX again. Uh, but otherwise it does look very much alike. But uh, the cushion case has some nice circular brushing here on the side contrasting with a polished underside and the bezel has nice brushing also with these notches in the bezel also. We have drilled lug holes so makes it much easier to switch the strap. Moving to this side we have an unsigned crown, a screw in crown by the way and no crown guards and uh, the case is of course similar on this side also. Screw in case back with the 
famous wave on the Seiko Prospects brandy. Very familiar 4R35 movement. So you've got hand winding and hacking. Unscrew the crown. First position, hand winding. Second position, twitch the date under the cyclops there. And outward position, we have the time set. And you can see second hand hacks. 41 hours of power reserve and uh, 21,600 bph workhorse movement. Closer look at the dial, we have a nice matte, kind of matte black finishing on the dial with uh, these rounded hour indices which appear to be applied but according to my research they are not applied but lots of loom on the marking markers and uh, they're nicely framed with metal there so they shine in the light pretty nicely nice contrast with the black dial some youtubers call these indexes uh, tombstone shaped and i think that's uh, pretty fitting they do look like tombstones and the six and nine position they look like different tombstones and uh, then we have that v-shaped index at 12 o'clock overall i think that's a really nice look for this watch but definitely looks like a seiko diver as it should seiko is painted on as is the prospects branding automatic and divers 200 meters so this is an iso certified diver so no problem going diving this one since it's literally made for that we have a hardlex crystal on top and glued onto that we have the weird round cyclops which i didn't think i would like but i actually like it now that i'm used to it first time ever having a cyclops on a watch <laughs> that looks kind of cool and as it is an iso rated diver of course it has a diving bezel and uh, 120 click unidirectional bezel with this really nice solid action kind of satisfying i'd say it's easy to turn but still it has some resistance easy to grip also even gloves and it's a more solid feeling than on let's say an skx again for comp comparison no back play lines up nicely and I uh, have to say, quality control wise, this is a step up from Seiko 5s and SKXs. The chapter ring aligns nicely. Maybe a little bit of misalignment there at the 6 o'clock, but too close to call. Aluminium insert on the bezel. Nice. Nice black insert. I think that's. it looks like the same insert as on the SKX. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. And we have a loom pip at the 12 o'clock there so all in all pretty nice and the hands are a basic uh, sword and arrow combo with a lollipop second hand nice crushed finishing on the hands contrasting nicely with the dial and a two-tone second hand with black paint makes it look like that ball of loom there is floating on the dial as I already mentioned, lots of loom on this dial. Uh, it's put in a loom shot here. Really nicely loomed, as Seiko's usually are. Now, the thing that makes this Seiko really great, uh, and that's how it sits on the wrist. Let's take this glove. There it is on my six and a half or six and three quarter inch wrist. I never remember the size, but that just sits really nicely on there. Uh, perfect fit for a wrist of this size, in my opinion. No problem with the Miltat bracelet either, because the lug to lug on the watch is so short that the protruding middle link doesn't really do anything bad but for an 
even for let's say a six inch wrist this watch on the original bracelet will fit really nicely so it's got kind of a, like a big watch presence with that 42 millimeter diameter but due to the 43 millimeter lug to lug it just wears really nicely so you get presence but it doesn't look too big even on a small wrist so the shape of this watch is just really really nice kudos to Seiko for for this watch it gives guys like me with smaller wrist the possibility to wear a substantial diver without it looking stupid <laughs> let's take our wrist shot outside also Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the Mini Turtle and the Seiko SKX009. As you can see, they're really similar looking, but still different. And they have the same diameter, I believe, 42 point something millimeters. But the Seiko SKX has uh, maybe like 45 millimeters lug to lug, while the Mini Turtle has 43 millimeters which makes it wear smaller on the wrist, I think. You can see similar looking, but still different. Same kind of numbers on the bezel, but they're a bit larger on the mini turtle. And similar looking dial, but slightly different as well. Also looks like there's more loom on the mini turtle than on the SKX. We can do a comparison of the loom shot. And there's both of the watches on the same wrist or arm, just for good measure. Small side note here about the our mini review of a Miltat bracelet. Since this is my first ever experience with a Miltat bracelet, there you can see the branding. Uh, really impressive quality. This thing is solid as a rock really no flex on the bracelet and really solid links solid end links nicely machined clasp with uh, lots of micro adjustments uh, i made a nice scratch there also way to go and really <coughs> secure clasp mechanism also only downside maybe this clasp is a little bit large for my taste. There you can see it, it's pretty big, but doesn't really bother me. But yeah, Miltat bracelet can warmly recommend it for this watch. Uh, maybe it would I would uh, prefer if the end links were made like on the Seiko bracelet but not this time okay let's put this thing on the silicone strap and give you a short review of that strap as well this kind of reminds me of an old school batman logo or something <laughs> there we go here it is on the silicone bracelet i'm not really a fan of these but it's a dive watch, so Mark from Long Island Watch uh, made a cool video explaining or testing these like uh, dive straps and actually there I learned the purpose of these curves here so it won't break the spring bars when you yank it on something underwater but yeah, <laughs> plenty of holes on this at least the wave here on the end of the strap yeah, pretty soft material i think i think i had uh, the rubber strap rubber strap for the skx and that just was awful really uncomfy uh, big keeper here nicely brushed with seiko branding and a big pretty substantial buckle here also with seiko branding all in all, pretty nice strap. Let's put it on the wrist. 
as you can see it's a little bit long for me but this thing's supposed to be worn on a diving suit so but yeah that's how it looks on the rubber strap i'm not a fan of rubber straps so i would never wear it like this unless i would go swimming but i know there are people out there who really like their rubber straps and i must say it's pretty comfy so and while we're at it why don't i show you how this thing wears on a nato strap as well there it is on a gray skid belt nato strap I'm not sure if the case or the shape of the case is actually so beneficial for a NATO strap, but I mean, from a distance, looks real nice. It's a bit of a different case, but uh, yeah, I don't know if that upward shaping like turtle shell shape is so nice on a NATO strap, but you can't tell it from a distance. It wears kind of and a green NATO strap. Desert color. Brown leather NATO. Black suede NATO. This is actually pretty nice. Here on black leather and on the wrist. Rubber strap from Zulu Diver. And on the wrist. A bit too long for me. Since you see that thing poking out there but this works really nicely especially for a diver and black cordura strap off the wrist on the wrist okay that's it for the strap inspiration and the strap alternatives I'm gonna try to do this as often as I can in my reviews because I remember I was always looking for different kinds of straps on videos to see how they look. If there's some alternative you want to see on some of my watches, make sure to give a comment down below and I will try to post a picture or a video of that combination on my Instagram account, uh, Instagram account Nordic Watch channel. So go follow that for fun. That's pretty much all I had in mind for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. All I can say is if you are thinking about getting a Seiko Mini Turtle, uh, go for it. I really like this watch and uh, can warmly recommend the Miltat bracelet also. But if you're thinking about getting it on the rubber strap or on the original metal bracelet i'd say go for the metal bracelet if you have any questions or comments put them in the comment section below i always answer and uh, yeah go follow or subscribe to my channel over there uh, i'm trying to get to 500 and then to a thousand subscribers so if you like my content make sure to subscribe and uh, help me out also press the bell icon and like this video. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.